If you clicked on this video, it's probably because you're wondering whether or not you can learn Cinema 4D on a laptop. And fortunately for all of you, I spent the last four months doing just that. I started off on a 13 inch MacBook Pro. HP sent me one of their top of the line laptops with the RTX 2080 and i7, 32 gigabytes of RAM. I'll tell you about what that was like. Then I went out and bought my own desktop PC. And uh, this is kind of like a video summary of my experience all through all of that, and uh, we'll answer some questions. Those questions are going to be, can you learn Cinema 4D on a laptop? My experience learning Cinema 4D on a laptop, so what are the, some of the things you're gonna run into, the problems, good, bad, rendering times, that kind of thing. Mac versus PC, that's very, very important. Uh, please stick around for that. It's a little bit technical, but if you're going and buying a laptop for Cinema 4D, this is very, very important. Also, desktop versus laptops for learning Cinema 4D and what kind of uh, implications you're gonna have to look out for when you're choosing between one or the other. So let's start off with the first one. Can you learn Cinema 4D on a laptop? Uh, absolutely, yes you can, no issues. If you've got a 13 inch MacBook Pro, much like I had, which was nothing special, it was a 2018, 2017 baseline thing, you can do the bulk of your learning on the laptop, no issues. This is because when you're learning Cinema 4D, first off, you're basically learning the concepts. You're learning modeling, lighting, texturing, dynamics, particles, animations, keyframes, the whole nine yards. You do not need a super powerful machine to learn Cinema 4D. So no matter what you have now, you can download Cinema, give it a go, see whether or not it's something you actually enjoy, and then you go and buy something depending on you know what your use cases are. So learning Cinema 4D on a laptop is no issues at all. Now, if you're looking at buying something, this is where it gets uh, a little bit more nuanced. The biggest thing here is Mac versus PC. Mac is very locked down in terms of the third-party render engines available to you. So things like Redshift, uh, Octane, Arnold, Corona, some of these are GPU-based render engines. And by GPU-based render engines, they really only work on NVIDIA hardware. What I mean by really is that they only work on NVIDIA-based hardware, whereas uh, Mac hardware is all AMD. Uh, you cannot run Redshift GPU on a uh, Apple device, and that's unfortunately very limiting. So if you're only here for that information, do not buy a Mac-based laptop or PC to do cinema stuff. I know people do, I wouldn't recommend it. I would always recommend going Windows just simply because you have those render engines available to you. Your rendering times also will be significantly reduced. You can buy you know, a, a desktop PC with four GPUs, it's gonna render much faster than um, anything Apple can throw at you. So uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. Please, please, please think twice before buying uh, Apple for Cinema 4D stuff. That's not saying you need to throw away your MacBook. Uh, to learn Cinema 4D, you definitely can. You can do some really cool stuff with it. But if you're buying something, uh, I would stick with Windows. Now I've got the Mac versus Windows thing out the way. Let's talk about kind of uh, my context with Cinema 4D and my journey learning it so you kind of understand where I'm coming from. So I started learning Cinema 4D in October of last year and I started on a 13 inch MacBook Pro. As I mentioned before, that was more than capable to learn on. You can learn the basics, you learn kind of all the concepts around Cinema 4D and you know, kind of the things that will make you a good motion graphics artist. You can totally learn that on a laptop, whether that's Windows or PC based, uh, a lot of that stuff is the same. Cinema comes bundled in with a standard or a physical renderer, which com is compatible across Mac and PC. It's a CPU based renderer and uh, it works just fine. You can still do some really cool style frames. Um, I'll link a few tutorials uh, down below. You can see some work that uh, I've done, just kind of, you know, I'll interlace it in with the talking head kind of stuff. It's not gonna be the fastest thing in the world, but in terms of, you know, actually learning Cinema 4D, more than capable. It, you do run into issues when you have like a very complex scene. Say for example, you've got a cloner with a ton of different objects. You're, you know, doing like, 200, 300, 400 objects, objects sometimes, um, then things do definitely get uh, slowed down. Where the laptops kind of really, you know, they, they don't shine, but they're more than capable of is style frames. So creating like really cool, like single frame images, it's, uh, you know, it's fun. You can do a lot of cool stuff with that. And so a lot of the time they'll only take maybe two and a half minutes to five minutes to render like each frame. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's all good. More than capable of doing that. A lot of the um, initial learning I did on the 13 inch MacBook Pro and that was cool, but I realized that in order to progress my Cinema 4D knowledge and to get hired, I should maybe be looking at third party render engines. And because Mac doesn't support that, I had to go for a Windows based system. One other thing as well is that Octane is releasing a update to include the Metal API and their render engine. And Metal API, for those of you who don't know, is what the AMD systems use uh, for their kind of graphics library. So that is something on the horizon that's confirmed that's coming out, but we do not know how performant that is, how reliable it's gonna be. So as for now, my recommendations 
100% uh, still for the Windows based ecosystem. That might change next year. Um, it could be fantastic, but for now, uh, Windows is the way to go. HP actually sent me out one of their Omen laptops. Now, these are kind of like the cream of the crop in terms of what's available for you in the laptop world. In terms of the top specs, you're gonna be getting an RTX 2070 or a 2080, some variant of an i7 CPU, as well as 32 gigabytes around about of RAM. And really for basically everything that you're doing, that's gonna be more than enough. When I switched from the MacBook Pro to the Omen, in terms of like tangible benefits I saw straight away was that I could use Redshift, which drastically reduces render times. That was absolutely fantastic. I could also produce more complex uh, scenes without anything crashing or slowing down. My look development was a lot qu quicker. One of the big things as well is that when you're rendering the MacBook Pro, so this animation by Don Mufasi, uh, that took nine and a half hours to render with the physical renderer. Whereas with Redshift, unfortunately, I didn't get uh, to test this out, but a lot of the renders I was doing, it was taking around maybe 15 to 20 seconds per frame to get like a final render, which was very quick. And the, the laptop didn't even get too loud as well, which was fantastic. I really dislike noisy laptops. So well done HP on that one. Going from like a, more of an entry level laptop to something like the, the Omen, it just meant that I could work faster and my renders were coming out quicker, which meant that I could iterate quicker. I could change lighting and it was just a much more pleasant experience to do development on. That was that would be the main benefit of going for like a top of the line laptop like this. Um, there are a couple of different options. You've got the HP, which is fantastic. I really like that it came with a uh, SD card slot going from the Mac to, uh, to that. There was no more dongles. I could just plug an SD card in and that was fantastic. The portability was uh, amazing, being able to kind of go wherever I wanted and to do 3D stuff, uh, that was fantastic and it was powerful enough to do basically everything that I needed to do. So now let's talk about going from something like the Omen to a desktop PC. What benefits did that yield? Uh, basically more performance, more power, faster iteration loops, and that was basically it. Some of the big things to consider when you're looking at basically a laptop versus a desktop is that with a laptop, you're more confined to the manufacturer. So what you buy when you first buy the machine is basically what you're stuck with. It's a lot harder to upgrade and scale with a laptop, whereas with a desktop PC, you can swap out the motherboard, you can add in another couple of GPUs and your power scales like that. There are a couple of caveats, for example, um, one particular use case uh, for laptops, which I very much enjoy, is basically when you use your laptop as your look development machine and then you send all your renders out elsewhere. So another popular YouTuber, I'm, I'm not a popular YouTuber, but um, Andre Lebrov, who is an amazing 3D artist, please go check out his channel. He does all of his work on a razor blade and then whenever he needs to render out anything, he sends it to a render farm or uh, his PC at home. It's a very elegant solution and something I would definitely like to uh, work into my workflow at some stage in the future. Let's talk about why you would buy uh, a desktop over a laptop and vice versa. Desktops are really for people who are gonna be working in one location most of the time and they don't need to be traveling to clients or going to university. You can do all your work at home, no issues. Also somebody who's more value focused as well, you're gonna get better performance for your dollar on a desktop system as opposed to a laptop. For somebody who's wanting to scale that as well, obviously a desktop PC is going to be better for you because you can add in uh, extra GPUs or get a new CPU and more RAM and that kind of thing. You're not limited to the hardware provided to you by the manufacturer. There are a couple of cases where a laptop comes very much in handy. If you're somebody who travels between different homes, if you are someone who's a university student and you have access to a cheap render farm and maybe you do work at home, you do work at uni and you wanna carry that with you at all times, a, a laptop would be a really good option. Um, if you don't wanna use a desktop, fantastic laptop, you can go into university, you can do your work, come home, do your work, send out all your files to the render farm and uh, easy peasy. Normally with desktop versus laptop debates, you're sacrificing a lot of performance. But with, with these laptops, kind of like the RTX 2080 and 2070s and uh, everything that's available now, you're still able to do all of your work on a laptop system and then just send it out to like a render farm or whatever you need to do. So you're really, you're not losing a lot of that performance and you, you just basically still have that flexibility to be portable and still you do your work. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good solution. In terms of what to look for when you're getting like a laptop for Cinema 4D stuff in particular, um, you're gonna want to have a lot of RAM, you're gonna want to have a fast storage device, and if you're doing GPU rendering with Redshift or Arnold or 
yeah, mainly I think Redshift, Arnold, Octane are the, the main GPU based renderers. You're gonna want either a 2070 or a 2080 if you can afford it. So the laptop that HP sent out, this is a, it's an HP Omen 15DH00 77T, you know what? It's gonna be easier if I just link everything below. So my particular model came with a 32 gigabytes of RAM, it was an i7 processor, a 2080 uh, GPU, and a 144 hertz screen. So for me, it made a fantastic gaming machine, which was great, I did do some gaming on it. I was playing Star Wars The Fallen Order and that was fantastic, as well as doing all the cinema stuff as well. And um, for me, it worked very, very well. Uh, if I was to go and buy a, uh, a laptop for doing rendering, I would, Check out the HP Omen for sure. Razer Blade uh, also has a fantastic laptop. I really like the build quality of the Razer Blades. Uh, and there are a couple of other Gigabyte and MSI models as well. So when you're looking at a laptop, I would definitely recommend something in the 2070 to 2080 range in terms of GPUs. And then you can kind of mix and match with the CPU processors and obviously get as much RAM as possible. But if you are looking at the HP laptop, you thought that's something you might enjoy. Um, some of the specs are linked below and you can go check that out. So again, thank you very much HP for sending that out for me to have a play with. So let's quickly go through everything that we've done so far. Learning Cinema 4D on a laptop, can you do it? Absolutely yes. Do you need to go and buy a laptop for Cinema 4D? If you already have one, definitely not. Download Cinema 4D, check it out. If you really enjoy it and think it's worth um, kind of like investing more and in, then go out and buy a more capable machine, absolutely. But you do not need to do that just to learn Cinema 4D. Should you go for a uh, laptop or a desktop PC? Well, that really, you know, it's a personal preference. It's what you really value out of a system. If you're more value conscious and you know that you're not gonna be, um, you know, moving around too much, then I would recommend a desktop. Uh, it gives you a lot more flexibility in terms of power, upgradability, you can do everything, a lot more things with a desktop PC. However, if portability is a factor for you, if you're gonna be, you know, moving around houses or going in between work and studio and you're wanting to carry everything with you or you're a university student, um, especially if you have access to like a cloud render farm, then that would be such an elegant solution for you because you can do all your work on the laptop and then send it off to a render farm and fantastic. You can go, I wouldn't work on the beach, but uh, you know, you're more than entitled to do that uh, if you so please. In terms of Mac versus PC as well, 100% go down the uh, PC route because it's just gonna limit you if you go down, if you buy a 16 inch MacBook Pro, um, you're really shooting yourself in the foot in terms of third party renderers. I think you are only able to use a standard physical Corona and Arnold CPU, and I have no idea what the performance is like. It, it might be okay, but I really do think uh, in terms of your personal growth, a lot of studios as well, they use Redshift, um, they use Arnold, uh, they use um, a lot of third party renderers. So having the option to at least go and learn that is super valuable. So those are my thoughts. Um, again, thank you very much for sending out the uh, laptop HP that enabled me to do this video. So cheers. And uh, yeah, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys. See ya.